Are you comfortable in your skin? Did you know that you can eliminate a lot of problems in your life by thinking positively? Do you have an I can do anything attitude? Or do you believe you can't? Believing you can by thinking forward and upward creates peace and a sense of well being. Being deliberate and being intentional in your thoughts, words, and actions puts you in control. You can train your brain to be happy. Visualizing success will bring success. I have practiced these steps and I have changed the way I think, and now I am comfortable in my skin. You can be comfortable in your skin as well if you will apply positive thinking to your daily routine. I will teach you how to practice these steps for greater happiness. Believe you can by thinking forward and upward. Be deliberate and intentional in your thoughts, words, and actions. Train your brain to be happy. And visualize your success to bring success. Let's begin our training by learning about thinking forward and upward. Forward thinking is focusing on today and staying centered on the present and future. Thinking about mistakes that we make or embarrassing things that have happened to us in the past or negative things happening in our communities or in the world or on the news can bring us down and consume our thoughts. Comparing our situation to another situation can also bring us down to be self-defeating. Comparing in any way can be self-defeating. Dwelling on the negative narrows our perspective about our world and about ourselves. Learning to see the good and express gratitude helps us to feel lighter and more capable and can bring to pass endless opportunities. But I wasn't seeing the good. And I was comparing. And it was becoming a habit that was consuming me, and I needed help. As I was seeking what I needed to do, I was on an outing with my family at the Temple Visitor Center. And my husband and I sat down and listened to the testimonies and witnesses of the 12 apostles. Elder Uchtdorf said something that changed my life. He said, quote, the restored gospel of Jesus Christ has the power and blessings to overcome and take away earthbound, self-centered limitations or boundaries, unquote. What? I listened to it again and again, and I wrote down every word. The gospel has the power to take away earthbound limitations. I couldn't believe it. I knew that was my answer. I went home and memorized that quote. And I began my study. As I, in my personal study behavior, I opened the book of Alma in chapter 38. I was praying for how to act. I learned six things from the, from chapter 38 that have been really helpful. Number one, be diligent and hardworking. Number two, bridle my passions. Number three, be bold, but not overbearing. Number four, do not be idle. I learned that I could be occupied and in use at all times, operating with power and purpose. Number five, trust in God. Number six, be grateful. I learned these from Alma chapter 38. I added two more of my own. Number seven, be to smile. And number eight, to be kind. Next, I'll talk about being deliberate and intentional in our thoughts, words, and actions, and how so doing will help us feel in control of our lives. Jennifer Brinkerhoff Platt, in the book Living Your Covenants Every Day, uses the term deliberate and intentional a lot. And she says this, quote, When our daily decisions are based on true principles, we place ourselves in a position to act with greater faith and purpose, 
unquote. If we want to be in control of our lives, we need to have purpose in everything we do, thus making deliberate and intentional choices. If I deliberately remember the steps I learned in Alma 38, if I deliberately think about the quote I learned from Elder Uchtdorf, I'm controlling my brain to think what I want it to think about. Then as I make the decisions in my life, I intentionally choose to act according to those things that I learned in Alma 38. And it changes my doubts to faith and my fears dissipate. And it gives my mind a place to go that is healthy and happy. As I practice each of these steps, I am intentional in my thoughts because I'm not allowing anything negative to enter my mind. As I do this, my sense of well-being is increased. And again, my doubts and my fears dissipate. Then feelings of encouragement have room to spread their wings and allow my creativity to flow because I'm no longer burdened with despair from negative thoughts. I now have control over my mind. And if my mind is in control, I'll be peaceful and positive in my words and actions, thus making my choices that will lift and carry me to success. Deliberately choosing what I think and how I think allows me the power to intentionally choose to move forward with my plans and activities and progress in my life, which creates more forward thinking and upward thinking and more deliberate and intentional behavior. Now I'll show you how to use affirmations to train your brain to be happy. There is a book by Dr. Norman Vincent Peale called The Power of Positive Thinking. I have used the miniature version of this book, and he gives 10 techniques that can help teach the concept of forward and upward thinking and create peace of mind and feelings of joy. These techniques have helped me in my life to eliminate the negative and think more positive. I will briefly mention a portion of the 10 steps from his book. Number one, formulate a mental picture of yourself succeeding. Two, whenever a negative thought comes to your mind, deliberately voice a positive thought to cancel it out. Number three, minimize your obstacles. Do not inflate them by fear thoughts. Number four, do not be awestruck by other people and try to copy them. You can be you more efficiently than anyone else. Number five, repeat ten times a day. If God be for us, who can be against us? Six, get a competent counselor. Number seven, repeat 10 times a day the verse from Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Number eight, make a true estimate of your ability and then raise it 10%. Number nine, put yourself in God's hands. And number 10, remind yourself that God is with you and nothing can defeat you. These are shortened versions of the steps, but they really work. I have a friend that I walk with every morning. We walk for exercise, but we don't just exercise. We talk about uplifting things, and sometimes we read an article together or a book together. Sometimes we just talk about insight we, we receive from our own personal study. But the best thing we do is to read affirmation cards as we're walking and quotes that have lifted us in the past. And or just to help lift ourselves to the forward and upward thinking that we desire. Whether the affirmations are repeats from Alma 38 or Dr. Norman Vincent Peale or Jennifer Brinkerhoff Platt in Living Deliberately and Intentionally, the, as I mentioned earlier in my speech, or whether they're from another source of our own choosing, simply reading them over and over and practicing them trains our brains to think upward. The last concept I want to talk to you about is visualization. 
This is a step I'm still learning to practice. In the book, Eight Steps to Lasting Excellence, the author Cameron C. Tyler quotes, there is great power in the words we put into our minds, but there is even greater power with images. Visualizing your goals daily will increase your motivation, stimulate your creativity, and heighten your awareness of resources that can help you achieve your goal. Unquote. To explain this concept, Cameron C. Tyler, the author of this book, tells a story about a man named Roger Bannister, who in 1952 set the goal to be the first man to run a mile in under four minutes. The record for the, running the mile was four minutes and 1.4 seconds, and that record was held for nine years. For years, that four minute mile was considered unreachable and dangerous to the health of any athlete. But Roger Bannister broke through the psychological barrier and visualized running the race in three minutes and 59 seconds. He put a paper on his wall that said three minutes and 59 seconds. And every night he said, I ran the race over in my mind. Visual visualization helped him see the goal as possible. When it came time for the race, he ran the race in three minutes and 59.4 seconds, setting a new world record and breaking the proclaimed impossible barrier. Once the barrier was removed, the door was open for others to achieve this feat. Only 46 days after Roger Bannister set the record, Another man from Switzerland, John Landy, broke his record, and hundreds of people since then have run a mile under four minutes. As we visualize our own success, along with training our minds to be happy and being consciously aware and deliberate and intentional in our efforts, we will find that we are making progress. In other words, thinking forward and upward and becoming an all around more positive person. In conclusion, I would ask you to try for one day what I have suggested here. Do you want to be comfortable in your skin? Take the steps to achieve a forward and upward thinking attitude. Deliberately choose to see the blessings in your life and fill your mind with gratitude for them. And be intentional in your actions and make them purposeful. Teach yourself to be consistent and practice these new skills daily. And visualize yourself succeeding. Try it. You never know what might happen. You might just find out that you are comfortable in your skin. And when that happens, you can do anything. The only thing I don't like.